Some specialty crop growers are using alternative managed bees for crop pollination. These alternative managed bees, including certain solitary cavity nesting bees like the alfalfa leafcutter bee and the blue orchard bee, are either being used alone or in combination with honeybees. Osmia lignaria, the blue orchard bee, or Bob for short, is a solitary mason bee that lives in tunnels or cavities above ground. Researchers on the Integrated Crop Pollination Project discovered that using managed bobs and honeybees together improves pollination and increases nut set in almonds. In this video, we'll talk about how to manage blue orchard bees for commercial scale almond pollination. Bobs are native to and found in the wild in North America. In the wild, these bees might nest in wood tunnels excavated by beetles or other natural cavities, but they'll readily nest in artificial nesting materials such as cardboard or paper tubes, wood blocks, and hollow reeds. A female bob's life looks something like this. Early spring, emerge from the nest as an adult, mate, find a suitable nest site, fill the back of the nest with enough pollen and nectar for one offspring, lay an egg, collect some mud to create a wall, and repeat until the tunnel is full. Once she's filled up one tunnel, she'll find a new tunnel, then repeat the whole process again, building and filling a series of partitioned cells with her offspring until she dies, about four to six weeks after emerging. Inside the cells, her eggs develop into larvae using their pollen nectar provision for nourishment. After about two weeks, the larvae spin a silken cocoon inside their cells and enter a summer diapause, or a period of suspended development, as prepupae, for about two weeks to a few months. They metamorphose into adults inside their cocoons by about three to four months after their egg was first laid. They'll overwinter as adults ready to emerge in the spring. Keep this life cycle information in mind as we go through the steps to managing these bees for pollination. There are eight main steps to managing blue orchard bees. One, purchase or trap wild bobs. Two, set up artificial nest materials. Three, incubate cocoons until ready to release bees. Four, ensure mud and additional forage are available. Five, check on bees during the active season. Six, remove bees from the field. Seven, sanitize cocoons and nest materials. And eight, store over the dormant season. You can skip all of these steps by contracting with a pollination service provider to buy or rent these alternative managed bees, but if you're interested in managing bobs yourself, keep watching. Step 1. Purchase or trap catch bobs. Bob cocoons can be purchased in the winter from companies that wild catch or propagate bobs. Alternatively, if you're in an area where bobs are common, you can wild catch bees by placing out artificial nesting traps to use during the next season. Your best option is likely to be finding a reputable seller of locally sourced, captive-reared, disease-free bees. How many cocoons do you need? In almonds, the current recommended stocking rates are 400 female bees and 600 male bees per acre for a total of 1,000 bees per acre, in addition to using a full or reduced rate of managed honeybees. This bob stocking rate is the estimated replacement rate for one hive per acre of honeybees. Visit the Orchard Bee Association website to find out more about how to get bobs and other tips on bob management. Step 2. Set up artificial nesting materials. For nesting materials, you can use cardboard tunnels lined with paper tubes or laminate blocks with well-formed tunnels that can be pulled apart to extract and sanitize cocoons. Make sure to provide the nest materials with an awning for shade. Researchers with the ICP project found that for large-scale management, these nesting materials are both easy to distribute in large orchards and easy to sanitize. There are pros and cons to each of these materials. Check with your supplier for more information. You'll need to supply at least two cavities for each female bee you release. To maximize nesting and reproduction, distribute nests evenly around an orchard block with around eight to 10 small sites per acre rather than in a central mass nesting arrangement. Step three, incubate cocoons, then release bees. To get bees ready to emerge early enough for almond bloom, the bees must be incubated. At ambient temperatures in the wild, blue orchard bees would tend to emerge after almond bloom. Switch from cold storage to incubating the cocoons at about 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, about one to two weeks prior to release in the orchard. Don't stack cocoons too thickly during this incubation period. Stack loose cocoons no deeper than two to three inches to avoid excessive heat and condensation. When almonds have reached about 15% bloom, 
take emergence containers out to release sites. Make sure these are rodent and bird proof with a small exit hole for emergence. Ideally, the release point will be at a central location in the orchard. Step four, ensure mud and additional forage are available. Blue orchard bees need mud to partition the cells of their nests. They prefer clay soils over silt and sand. If your orchard soils are dry, create mud puddles with a water truck or other source of irrigation. Make sure any sources of mud are not contaminated with pesticides. Having mud close at hand will allow bees to build mud partitions quickly and get back to pollinating. Bobs are active for a few weeks after emergence and will benefit from additional flowering resources after almond bloom in order to continue reproducing. Researchers on Project ICP found that planting annual flowers next to an almond orchard increases bob nesting and reproduction, and that these flowers don't compete with almond blossoms for pollination. Without this additional forage, you're likely to observe poor rates of bob reproduction over the season. Step five, check on bees during the active season. Due to their low stocking rates, bobs can be difficult to see visiting almond flowers. However, you can monitor activity by checking nest boxes to determine if females are building nests. You can determine if a female is completing nests by looking to see if the straws are capped with mud. Avoid spraying insecticides and fungicides while bees are in the field. Check nests for any obvious predators. Step six, remove bees from the field. Bobs will typically remain active for at least two weeks after almond bloom, depending on the amount of available alternative forage. Leave nest boxes in the orchard as long as possible to avoid disturbing developing larvae, but remove from the orchard in time to avoid conflicts with pest management practices. Store nests inside to protect the nests from parasites and weather events. Temperatures should be around room temperature or around 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The bees need to get into this constant temperature storage within 30 days of becoming adults inside their cocoons. You can monitor whether the bees have reached adulthood by opening up a few tunnels and checking the first few cocoons. Step seven, sanitize nest materials and cocoons. Parasite and disease control can be a major issue in large-scale bob management. Nests can be attacked by a variety of insect pests in the field, and in storage, the nests can fall prey to scavenging moths and dermestid beetles. This mason bee larva is being attacked inside its cocoon by the larvae of a monodontomerus parasitic wasp. These pests need to be taken seriously. After moving the cocoons inside, let them sit for a few weeks to make sure they've completed development. Extracting and sanitizing cocoons can happen in the fall or in winter after they've reached adulthood. To sanitize the nests, manually extract cocoons from nests and discard pests and dead cells. Extraction is easy from laminate blocks and only moderately more difficult from paper-lined cardboard tubes. You can also use this opportunity to sort cells by sex based on cell size, set next year's stocking rate, discard old paper nest liners, and reline cardboard tubes with new paper liners. You can sort cells by sex based on their size and position in the nest. Female bees are larger and laid at the back of the nest for extra protection from predators and parasites, while male bees are smaller and laid towards the front. Talk with your supplier about monitoring for predators and parasites and sanitizing your materials. Step eight, store over the dormant season. Store nests or cocoons at around 35 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, typical fridge temperature, through the winter. Store loose cocoons in vented containers. These containers can be brought directly to the orchard at the time of release. Once you have your bees, you can repeat from step two, setting up nesting materials every year. If you're thinking about managing blue orchard bees for pollination, we hope you've found this video to be helpful. There are lots of additional resources on blue orchard bee management. Two great places to start are how to manage the blue orchard bee and managing alternative pollinators, both of which you can download for free online from the links in the video description. Feel free to leave questions or comments in the comment box and subscribe to our channel for more videos on bees and pollination. Visit our website at www.projecticp.org. Thanks for watching.